To say that Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema has been a thorn in the Democrat side throughout these budget reconciliation neg negotiations is an understatement of epic proportions. And now some in our own circle have had enough. Five members of Sinema's Veterans Advisory Council are calling it quits, stepping down in protest at her position on keeping the filibuster and blocking both voting rights and action on climate change and human infrastructure. They write in a letter to the, Sen to the senator, we feel as though we are being used as window dressing for your own image, not to provide counsel on what's best for veterans. Despite our continued outreach, you refuse to act on the issues that support our veteran community and protect the very heart and soul of our nation. They continue. We no, no, we no longer feel you are aligned with our values and we cannot in good faith continue to serve on your council. Cinema and fellow conservative Democratic Senator Joe Manchin seem to be trying to gut the bill, dragging out its passage and denying millions of Americans childcare, healthcare, free college and housing support. So finally, a group of our own supporters who are fed up and have a spine and are willing to speak out against the all powerful senior senator from Arizona. But the question, as ever, is, will cinema budge? Does she give a damn? Here to discuss is a former member of Cinema's Veterans Advisory Council, David Lucia. He's also a member of grassroots progressive group Common Defense and the president and CEO of the Arizona Veterans and Military Leadership Alliance. David served as a Green Beret in the Vietnam War and as a member of the Arizona Veterans Hall of Fame. David, thank you so much for joining us this evening. How did you personally come to your decision to resign and sign on to this letter? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on this uh, on your show. I love it, um, and and uh, th this these are hugely important issues um, at this at this time in our in our history. Um, it was a very difficult uh, decision for me personally. Um, I was frustrated, and then I was angry. I was perplexed, um, and as time marched on, um, the uh, uh, it became pretty evident that the the of course the, the, all the issues are important, but the one that's most dear and near to my heart are voting rights. Uh, I joined the army at 19 years old and turned 21 on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. I was not eligible to even vote, and then I was not uh, uh, not able to vote in a presidential election until three years after I got back from Vietnam, uh, and uh, more recently. Uh, I was in Iraq for a couple of years, and we were asked to take Iraqi citizens to the polls uh, under arms, uh, and, and uh, that's, that's what we did. We risked life and limb to take Iraqis to the polls so that they could vote in their first fair and free election in, in generations. So when I get back to this country and people are beginning to uh, suppress the vote, as well as yes. a subvert the vote. That is, it's hugely uh, well contrary said. to American democracy, and it's, 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 it's fundamental to its foundation. Uh, and so and yet, uh, I came to the conclusion that she uh, wasn't supporting this, although we encouraged her to, and there's still time uh, to, uh, to make that happen. David. And so but I you, just couldn't, David, can I couldn't ask? stay. Can I jump in and ask, have you spoken directly yeah. to the senator about this issue? She won't speak to reporters about where she stands on voting rights or the Biden economic agenda. She won't speak to Democratic colleagues in the House. She hasn't held a town hall for constituents in Arizona since her election in 2018. Have you been able to get through to her? You know, we've uh, had direct contact with her uh, during her, uh, her campaign, of course, and then had uh, uh, a couple of personal contacts with her um, uh, on the council, uh, but uh, not for the last year. And I did hear from her this morning when the story broke and she thanked me for my service to the country and to her office and uh, wished me well. And, uh, and, and uh, I, I had no way to really return the call. So uh, I listened to the message and, and uh, left it at that. She left you a voicemail saying she wished you well, but didn't try and make you stay and didn't, again, explain her position in any way. No, uh, that's, that's, that's correct. And, and uh, I, was, I, was, I, I was somewhat hopeful that we'd hear from her and, and uh, there'd be uh, some conversation that 
led me to be hopeful, but uh, it, that didn't happen and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. And that's when I came to the conclusion that uh, this just isn't working anymore for me and found that there were several others on the council that felt the same way. And so we wrote a letter, signed it and uh, sent it. Has she changed, David? A lot of people talk about this journey she's been on. Do you believe she's different to the person you supported and campaigned with in 2018? Absolutely. In fact, I've known uh, Senator Cinema uh, uh, for almost a decade now. I knew her when she was in the uh, state legislature, uh, and she uh, uh, we advocated for a bill, a veterans bill that would provide in-state tuition to all the state universities and, and uh, state-supported uh, uh, schools of higher education. She passed that bill, uh, uh, helped pass that bill, and. Um, it, the, the impact was huge. Um, a quick example, Arizona State University at the time had less than a thousand veterans go into that school, which is one of the largest institutions in the country. Yes. Today it has over 10,000 veterans go into that school and that accounts for about a hundred million dollars coming to the Arizona State University and uh, the community because of those veteran benefits. Huge impact. David, those are the kind of impacts that she she helped uh, uh, advance we, during her time at the state, and and she did David, do some we're, things. David, we're almost out of time. Veteran. David, we're yeah. almost out of time. So, f f so forgive my interruption. Quick last question. Twenty no. seconds left. Do you think someone sure. like Ruben Gallego, congressman, should challenge her in a primary? Should she be primary now? Yes or no? Uh, I think the time will tell. Uh, it's two years away. It's it's hard to predict, uh, but I do know that it, it appears that she is losing uh, support among her okay. base. We'll have to leave it there. David Lucia, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.